All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. This one's all about selecting models. So we're going to kind of look at some word problems and data and graphs and kind of figure out what's the appropriate function. Maybe it's linear, quadratic, cubic, absolute value, uh, whatever it is, we're going to try to figure it out. And then when we model it, are there any restrictions to our domain and range in that model? So we're going to start off the algebras here and their stamp collections. They love collecting stamps. Of course, they're math stamps. So let's check out Mr. Bean. There's his Euler stamp right there. Let's get rid of that. And let's figure out, okay, this is showing his total stamps over a certain amount of days. Here's our little context. We're going to try to figure out what kind of function this is. And we were doing this back in 1A. So we were just looking at the difference. You know, what's the rate of change here? So from 15 to 20 is 5. Oh, check it out. That one's also 5. Oh, I'm seeing a pattern. Here we go. We got a lot of 5s right here. So awesome. This one worked out well for us because they're all five on the first round. So if that happens the very first time, we say, hey, that's just linear. We've been doing that for a long time. Constant rate of change is five. Mr. Bean is getting five stamps per day. Nice job, Mr. Bean. If you want to justify that, we justify by saying the first differences are constant. Excellent. Come over here, Mr. Kelly. He's got a cool stamp going on there with lots of math in it. Uh, let's look for his differences. So right off the bat, we're going to do the first one. So it looks like he gets two stamps from the first to second day. Ooh, then four stamps. 12 to 18 is six. So I've got this pattern going on here. It looks like that is 10. So I can see it's a pattern. It's not constant yet. Let's look at the difference of the difference, the rate of change of the rate of change. So now when I do that, see how they're both increasing by two. So when that happens, the rate of change, the rate of change, it is going to give us a quadratic. So that's the second difference quadratic. Woo! So the handwriting is going today. Awesome. And if you want to justify that, we say our second differences are constant. Cool. Let's take a look at Mr. Sullivan. All right. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Uh, so we're taking a look at our first one. I see a difference from 8 to 13 is 5. Ooh, we got a big jump here. Looks like 17. 30 to 65 is 35. Oh my goodness, I'm going to struggle on my middle math here. 59, I'm guessing. And 124 to 213 is 89. Excellent. So that's the first round. Now I'm going to look at the difference of the difference and see if there's a pattern here. So 5 to 17 is 12. Uh, 17 to 35 is 18. 35 to 59 is 24. And the last one is 30. So I can see the pattern going on here, but it's not constant. Let's go one more wave, boom. And now I can see, sure, they're just adding six every time. So the rate of change of the rate of change of the rate of change. What's that gonna do with some of the third try? That's gonna make a cubic function. So we're trying to figure out, hey, if I was gonna model this, what fiction would I pick? Or what function, not fiction, what function would I pick? This case is a cubic because the third differences are constant. All right, let's take the last one, Mr. Brust. That's how Mr. Brust feels when he's doing math, just chilling out, a little compass right there. That guy's pretty awesome. Uh, just be careful here with Mr. Brust because look at the days here. They're not counting the same. It's one, three, four, five. So we have to look for a constant rate of change. Or, I'm sorry, we have to look for um, an even rate of change here. So from one to three to four is not even. So if I kind of just get rid of him from one to three to five is cool to seven and maybe just not do him. So I need to count by twos on top. So this pattern on top must also be the same counting by twos. Now what's happening here, so it looks like I get a difference of 6 from 89 to 95 is also a difference of 6 and from 95. So I've got that constant rate of change. So this is linear. I'm just getting 6 stamps every 2 days. So if you had to write the slope of this, it would be 6 stamps every 2 days. So uh, as long as you're counting by the same thing on top, then you're cool. Uh, the same interval. So 6 stamps every 2 days. And it's linear. We should justify linear too. Uh, down here, it's our first differences are constant. Awesome. All right, how's this going to apply? Well, we're going to look at some geomet geom geometrical problems. Sorry, I can't talk. Some, some geometry problems, some word problems, and there's some classic ones. When you see perimeter, if we're going to find the perimeter of something, and maybe I'll say, oh yeah, the width is x, the length is 6 more than x. So these are the classic geo problems. So what's the perimeter? Well, you add them all up. You say x plus x plus 6. That's half your perimeter. So you can double it. There's a bunch of different ways. Or just write it again. Plus x plus 6. So something like that is going to be linear. Okay. 
Moving on to area. So something like this with area problems, like, like the classic would be something like, hey, I've got a picture and it's six by eight. And you want to add this little border to it and the border is X, Y. So you're going to add this little distance here. Well, how big do I want to make this border? Well, I'm going to leave it as X. And when I do that, I get something like, oh yeah, this side is X plus eight plus X. So it's like two X plus eight is my new width. And then my new uh, length up here would be the same thing because it's X in this direction as well. So we would say something like two X plus six. Awesome. And then we would say, hey, we're going to find the area function. So we're just going to multiply those together. So what happens when you multiply these two unknowns together, the 2x plus 8, the 2x plus 6? When you FOIL that out, what do you end up getting here? You're going to get some kind of quadratic. So you're going to get x squared. So area problems are going to produce quadratic functions to look at. And perimeter are going to be these linear. So the degree of that is 1. So what do you think volume is? Sure, volume. And again, this could be crazy too. It could be something like, hey, this side is six more than the width, which is, uh, and the height is two more than the width, something like that. So we've got three dimensions. So what do you think is gonna happen when we do volume? Sure, multiply these all together. You've got X plus six. And I'm just making these up. I'm just trying to show you that, yes, it's gonna be a cubic function. And we're talking about, that's why we talk about cubic centimeters and things like that. So if you run into a volume problem, go ahead and get ready for cubic. So we're just trying to identify uh, what functions would be best to use to model a situation. Awesome. Let's go ahead and actually do one here. So now the other part of this is once you figure out what model it is, um, what are possible restrictions to that model? So. If I'm going to shoot this bottle rocket off a picnic table straight up, it comes down, here's the function. Let's go ahead and throw this bad boy in the calculator because we're going to have to get really smooth with the calculator. So hopefully you've used it before. Go to your y equals. Oh, I got a bunch of stuff in there. I'm just going to clear all that mess out. And we're going to type this function in. So we are going to say that it is negative 16. So that's the gravity right there, the force of gravity pushing you down 16 feet. Um, negative 16 x squared plus... 64x, that's the velocity that the rocket takes off with. And then three, that's the starting point um, of what the height of when it's fired. Excellent. So when you go to your window, this is always the tricky, tricky part. It defaults to this negative 10 by 10. But if you go to the graph, I don't think you're going to get a very good graph. Yeah, that's not that exciting. It doesn't quite show us what we want. So when you do window, you're actually doing domain and range. Would it make sense to say, hey, negative 10 seconds ago, my bottle rocket fired off? No, so your minimum seconds would be zero. And I don't know how long this thing's gonna stay in the air. Maybe this 10 seconds, maybe not. I'll leave it at 10 for now. And then this one is, what do you wanna count by? And then our Y values, you can go negative 10, but could it really be negative 10 feet? No, it's gonna be zero feet. How uh, far up do you think the rocket goes? I don't know, I'm gonna guess 100 feet in the air. No clue, oh, not 1,000. Let's try 100 feet and see what happens. And what do you want to count by here? Not by ones, maybe we'll count by tens. So now we should get a friendlier picture when that actually worked out pretty well. Um, I have a little too much height and a little too much time. That's okay. You've got everything you need right here. I may trim down the time just because there is so much extra there. So it looks like one, two, three. It looks like it's in around four. Let's go ahead and just trim this back to five. See if that still works pretty nice. There we go. That's a great picture right there. So just so we have it and can see it, can refer to it. There's our picture. Something like this. Um, so can you find the age of two? Sure, in the calculator, all you gotta do is hit trace two and it's gonna take you right there. So if you hit trace two, it tells you, boom, there it is, 67. So I like this picture even better. I'm gonna bring this one over. Why? Because it shows me the first answer. So uh, just getting smooth with the calculator here, we say the age of two is what, 67? And what does it mean in this context? I'm gonna type this one out. So what does this mean in context? So in two seconds, the rocket is 67 feet oh, high, or in the air. Something about the height of the rocket is 67 feet at two seconds. So why is labeling it? Well, you're just labeling the domain and range. It kind of gets us in the flow here of what's going on when the problem in context. Uh, so we're kind of explaining what's going on. Excellent. So now can you tell me the restricted domain? So this function up here, you could put any number in the world you wanted. You could put a million in for seconds, or negative 38. But we already looked at, we already got rid of negative 10. Why? Because that's before the rocket started. So what is the restricted domain? 
yeah, really, we're only going to look at time zero. That's the smallest time I want to see. And how long is this rocket going to be in the air? Is it going to be in the air a million seconds? No. So we can find out exactly how long this rocket is. We know it's less than five seconds. So how do we do that? We are going to look for where does this thing intersect? Um, you can come up here and say, where does it, uh, what are the zeros of the function? Or another little cool trick is you can say, hey, where does it cross zero? You can say graph y equals zero. So it graphs this little red line here. And now we can just do where the two intersect. That's a cool little way to do it. Just hit first curve, second curve, enter. And it's going to tell you 4.046 seconds. So that's pretty cool right there. So really, the in this problem, 4.604. That's how many seconds the rocket is in the air. How about the restricted range? Could this rocket ever go up to a, you know, a couple thousand feet? No, it's got a maximum height on this bad boy, so we need to find the maximum height. So to do that, go back to second trace, and we're looking for the maximum value. And I'm, hopefully you've done this before. Um, if not, you may want to pause and rewind, double check it. But basically, I always say, okay, I'm going to find the maximum point with my cursor. Left bound means get left of that point. So come over here a little bit, hit enter. Then I'm going to go back to my maximum point, get a little bit right of it, hit enter. And if you've got one of the newer calculators, it shows you where it's looking because we have we could have a bunch of you know local maxes and we don't know which one you're trying to find. Uh, it does want you to guess. You don't really have to. You can if you like, but it's only going to look at that range and tell you. Okay, so it looks like we're saying, hey, at two seconds, the rocket is 67 feet in the air. And sometimes the calculator is slightly off. When it gets 2.000002, it really means two. It just gets slightly off here. Um, that'll happen a lot. A lot of times you'll see like 1.999999. So uh, at two seconds, it's 67 feet, which is ironically enough, that was the point I picked earlier. I did not mean for that to happen, uh, but that works out well for us. So what is the maximum height? It turns out we have it. It was right there the whole time. Um, oops, it's not T. What is it going to be this time? It's going to be H, the height. So the height is going to be above ground level, zero, all the way up to 67 feet. So we're just restricting the domain of, I'm sorry, domain and range of this thing. Can you find the average rate of change on this interval? Sure, we already know that, uh, what, 2 makes 67. So I just need to do 3, so I'll, I'll subtract 3. So to quickly get that, just go back to your calculator, just hit trace 3, and it looks like 3 makes 51. So the calculator hooks us up there. So I know 3 makes 51. So go ahead and subtract these. What do I get? I get 16 over negative 1, which is negative 16. 16 what? Can I label these? Um, we're talking about what? We're talking about feet per second. So this is feet per second. Awesome. So what does that mean in context? It means from that interval from 2 to 3, the slope of this line is negative 16, or I'm, I'm losing 16 feet per second on average from two to three. Excellent, very nice. So we're gonna have to be uh, pretty good with the calculators here. Last thing we're gonna look at is a piecewise function. We're only gonna look at it graphically. Next time we'll go ahead and look at the actual function, but uh, algebraically. But for now, let's pretend we're selling yearbooks. Generic high school is selling yearbooks. 40 bucks if you buy it the first five months. So before they have it finished, they sell it at a discounted price. Then they start jacking that price up because by the end of the year, people realize they want to buy one uh, and they charge them a little bit more. So what's the domain in this context? Well, you can buy yearbooks all the way where? All the way up to that ninth month. Open circle means it doesn't exist there. So our domain is going to be, you can do it from the start of school, month zero, all the way up to uh, before the end of the ninth month there. So after school, nine months after school starts, you can no longer buy one. So we do have a restricted domain. So what's the range of this bad boy? Well, it starts here at 40 bucks for the first five months. We know that. So then what happens there? Well, each month after that, they jack up the price. So it's going to go up to 50 bucks after the first five months. Then what's it go up to? It goes up to 60 bucks. How about after that? 60 jumps to 70. And then 70 does jump to 80. So if you wait too long, you're going to pay 80 bucks for that same yearbook. Uh, so that is the range. It's just a set of those numbers. We could write it out fancier than that, but for us... For now, I think it's okay to say here, there's our range. So can you find this five and a half and then tell me what it means? Sure, so go over here. Five and a half is right there. It looks like it's coming up to what, 50 bucks? So the F of 5.5 .5 is 50 bucks. 
So I really just want to show you that these, the, this rounding, it's kind of rounding up. So basically if you hit five months, anything over five months, but less than six months, it's going to jump up to that $50 range. So um, I just wanted you to kind of see that it just jumps to these like rounding feature here. So can I explain that in context? Sure. The cost of the yearbook, five and a half months after school starts is $50. So anything from five to six months jumps up to $50 right there. Awesome, so we're gonna analyze piecewise functions. Should be good to go on this one. Um, good luck on the practice and the mastery check. Peace out.